What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel by orders of the Peaky Blinders. We are here to watch season one, episode number three. And these first two episodes, I think you said it in the last one, felt like a lot more than two episodes. Yes. In like the best Whole way possible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the way everything is laying out, the way that they are establishing these characters and the storyline and this environment, everything is fantastic. The music's great. The wardrobe looks fantastic. All the cinematography and the environment is really cool. And the way Thomas has been introduced as this boss of the Peaky Blinders, really cool. Like obviously the Shelby brothers are quite interesting and all three of them feel really unique. Because yes. the little brother, it feels like he's like gung-ho ready to just like oh, fight. He's, he's got a mouth. He's like the pit bull on the leash where yeah. it's like, hold him back, hold him back. He's like, you making fun of my brother. Like he's gonna go fight like real quick. And like obviously Thomas is, he's like cool, calm and collected until he needs to be. And then Arthur is just kind of the one who just, you know, older brother just plays the role. I mean, he got his ass whooped in that first episode for information. Yep. So that was pretty brutal. These storylines with the horse racing, with this crate of weapons, all these other external sources that are coming in to kind of mess around. And we got to meet Billy Kimber, who basically wanted to put Tommy up on a pole and shoot him because we know his plan was with his horse to win one, win one, and then lose the third one. With and all that extra bring money. Bring all the bets in and make that money. By the way, Alfred, we see you. It's un... I knew it. can't see anything else now. I, yes. You That's made the what, comment that you recognized him. I was like, I, right I know away. him. I know him from something. What is it? I mean, it's kind of a different look. Just, it it just, is, just but it little, isn't. Just his a little face bit. is so distinct. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, he doesn't just, you but know. But it's like he's got glasses on. His hair was like did nice know, and but, stuff. Oh, Alfred. Yeah. So. Don't be messing with Uhtred. Yeah. So Billy Kimber, he, they saw the abnormal betting and they came and to handle it and they were ready to just kill them. And then Tommy showed him the bullet from the Lee family. He was like, hey, by the way, we're both at war here. So he's like really strategic. Like he has been proven to be super smart and very strategic with his planning because now it feels like he's got Kimber on board to help yeah. him with this fight. We with have the, Lee the family. same enemy. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that was really interesting the way he's manipulated the situation and he has these plans that it needs a lot of stuff to go right for them to work and he's on that road and he proves to be very very smart and strategic you can see why he's the boss why yeah, he's in yeah, charge yeah. he's the decision maker yep so we also have this investigator campbell campbell who <laughs> The two of them had a really interesting conversation in this really cool like restaurant spot where everyone was having their like tea and desserts and stuff. Yes. And they came to an agreement as well, but they didn't shake hands. But after the fact, he he told them about the guns and he's got them, but he made a deal to basically get protection. So <clears throat> that was how he talked about earlier getting rich and like, oh, you're gonna have to pay for these guns. Yeah. That's what he meant by that. So he wasn't going to literally get money for it. He was going to get some kind of protection. But it didn't feel like Campbell was really on board with it because he sent his spy in to get more information. What's her name? Grace. Grace. Uh, he sent her in to like go get information about the situation. And I feel like her and Tommy, they're kind of hitting off a little bit. Well, they had a moment. I mean, once Tommy... She started singing too. And I think yeah. that sucked them in because it calmed them well, down. Well, I mean, once Tommy had to um, send the horse to the Rainbow Bridge. Oh, yes. I'm like, how do I put this? How do I make this nice for me? Yeah. Send the horse to the, to the... I know. That was just awful. I mean, you know, they, I'm sure... They don't no, have veterinarians no. out there. They had like a sad moment together. She understood the assignment. Right. So. Yeah. So we'll see where that all goes and what kind of danger she might be putting herself into. Because if she gets ID'd, I don't feel like good things could possibly happen. But I don't really. Yeah. We'll see where that goes. Because it didn't feel like Campbell was fully on board. Even though Tommy gave him all the information that he wanted potentially. So. We'll see. But also another big storyline is with their sister who is pregnant by... Freddie. Freddie. Nikki's the name expert, so I'll get the names. I do my best. <laughs> I'll get the names down very shortly, but mm -hmm. it usually takes half a season to really start learning names for me. Sometimes even a full one. Sometimes. But like this whole pregnancy situation feels like a really big deal because it was one of those situations where it felt like we missed some information because Tommy like sent him away, but he came back and he got his blood. He said he got his blessing. So now they're going to get married and have the kid. But even so, though Polly gave Tommy a letter, Tommy burnt the letter, but... Did he send his own different letter? But then it's like Polly then took Ada to get an abortion, mm. I assume. I, I, 
And then Freddie's just like, I'm back. Yeah. The, and Tommy yeah, said it was we're okay. Good. Yeah. I think you're lying. But staying feels like a really bad thing. Because I think he's lying. Yeah, but he's also got like a label on him. He's got a target on yeah. his back. Yeah. What so are you doing? All bro? of that, all of that feels very sketchy and dangerous. So we'll see if he's telling the truth, if that was a swerve. Again, I talked about this in the last video. Don't know exactly how their storytelling flows if they do try to swerve a lot or if it's just straightforward. We'll obviously learn the patterns as we go. But that whole thing just seems it, it felt off. Yeah. And obviously all the Peaky Blinders were in the war, like post-World War One time. They're all dealing mentally with the war. And I think that aspect of all of this is really fascinating. It's obviously a very important thing to focus on and acknowledge. So that aspect of all this is quite interesting too, considering the way Tommy presents himself and the way he acts. You can yeah. tell that there's something there there's a that he doesn't there. want yeah. to like expose and show people, yeah. but he's holding it to himself, especially while he's smoking that stuff in his room and having those dreams and and flashbacks so there's pain behind those eyes 100 mm -hmm. so first two episodes have been awesome can't wait to see where this goes you ready for episode three yes by order of the peaky binders here we go episode three let's go give me a bottle of whiskey and uh, three glasses please scotch or irish irish i've decided not to go to the races not unless you give me another two pound ten shilling toward the dress i've already given you three how much did you pay for the suit you will be wearing oh i don't pay for suits my suits are on the house or the house burns down. Oh shit, well there's that. <laughs> so you want me to go looking like a flower girl? What I want, it makes no difference. It's not me you dressing up for. Oh. I thought it was gonna be a date. I was wrong. I think we were both wrong. <laughs> me and her. Well, forgive me, Mr. Shelby, if I indulge a little. <laughs> it takes a lot for a man from Sparkbrook to step inside this pub. Anyone with money or good intentions is welcome in the garrison. Who said you had business? His cheekbones are outrageous. It's delicate, Mr. Shelby. It's a question of who knows what about what. This is a concern. Concerns the factory down the road oh. at the BSA. Now, as you might know, most of the paint shop there is Irish. Big old place like that. Rumors get started. Rumors that there was a robbery. Robbery of what? Guns, Mr. Shelby. Oh, girl, you don't want to get caught right now. And what business is that of mine? I mean, it's not the thickest wall separating the two of them. Right. Some say there was word from the proof and be. It was the Peaky Blinders who took him. Your night shift must be dreaming. Maybe they are. Or maybe they're not. If you were to hear about the whereabouts of said items, we'd pay good money. You have good money. We have the collections from the pubs. For who do you speak? The people of Ireland. The Irish Republican Army. For a fact. For a fucking fact. IRA. You think we're jokers? Am I laughing? After they've just like emptied the bottle. Seriously. Like... <laughs> oh, father, why are you? So sad. It's like, are you serious right now? A far off distant days. I'm really worried about this guy. You're gonna get shot right now, dude. I was about to be like, does he have his hat on? But he doesn't. He does not. The IRA. Wow, they have a fight song. It's amazing. That was a bizarre interaction. I thought you only allowed seeing on a Saturday. Whiskey's good proofing water. Tells you who's real and who isn't. And what did my countrymen want? Oh, the nobodies. Their actions were so thick, it's a wonder you could understand them. Next time I could translate. You'd work for me. That I already was. So you are coming to the races. Two pounds, ten shillings. Buy something red. To match his handkerchief. Whose handkerchief? <laughs> I don't know about this Freddy. And I feel really bad for Ada if she's being caught up in all this. I, I mean, mean, I know she's She's not. a Shelby, so. I know, and I was gonna say, I know she's not innocent, but oh my God, I love her. Ada, what the hell? I dared myself to run through their territory in my dress. Are you mad? Yeah. Mad as hell with all of them. Oh my god, I love the dress and the headpiece and everything about it. 
The more they try and stop us, the madder I'll be. Come on, Princess, the Vic is waiting. Wait, how do I look? Like an angel. Yeah, this situation just makes me so nervous. Yeah. Because it feels like one of those positive moments that they're presenting and it's gonna go to hell. But yeah, I feel like she's being used right now, which I don't want to feel that we way. Know about the Black Swan. Arr, it's a pirate ship. Oh. <laughs> One female operative has proved more useful. I'm thinking of the Black Pearl. Never mind. <laughs> that was dumb. We are regular police officers, uh, not spies. We can only act when a crime is being committed. Perhaps I should send some men down to the Black Swan to ask questions. And scare them all into hiding. Not the best of tactics, Sergeant. My tactics come from my experiences in France. Most of my great lumps of men served in France too, sir. I serve my country every day. His lack of service keeps getting used against him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, what does he expect? These officers in these uniforms to just go gather information when he's got a freaking spy in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the freaking bar? <laughs> like, how is that comparable? Girl, I don't know what you're doing right now. I mean, I know you got to do what you got to do, but also maybe don't. Fancy me, dear. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, Roddy bitch! I've seen your face serving at the garrison. Come here. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. That feels bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. watching Shit, right are you armed no then i'll tell you ada and freddie thorne were married today they defied your orders they haven't left the city oh so he did give okay well we must have missed that conversation yeah thomas i'll deal with it H how Where will you Freddy's comrades have safe houses. Why do you want to know? I want to send them flowers. Why do you think? Would it be so bad if they stayed? I promised I'd run Freddy out of town. Promised who? Yeah. I'm like, these doors are paper thin. I don't know why you even bother closing. It was part of the deal. Oh, shit. What happened to family votes? What happened to meetings? If you let me deal with Ada and Freddy, it'll end in peace. You get Freddy out of town, Paul, or else I'll deal with him myself. Oh, dear. So he did give the blessing. Yeah. Just, just you had to leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You couldn't stay. The victim had been drinking in the Black Swan pub, sir. The, the pub that you told me about. And the neighbor said that she saw a young woman leaving the streets where the body was found. Oh, he knows. He, he knows. Well, you said that your spy was a woman, sir. Oh. I wondered if there was now a policy. <laughs> Shoot to kill, like there was in Belfast. The Republicans are famously factional. He was killed by one of his own. I'll be all surgeon. By the way, I think you got Black Pearl and Miss Swan. No, I did. Combined, yeah. I mean, 100, yeah. Yeah, I was like, Miss I was Swan. thinking of the Black Pearl. But Miss Swan. Yes, but still are. <laughs> what the bloody hell is she doing here? 200 pounds, Freddy. For what? For us. To get the fuck out of town. Where did it come from? Family fund. Pockets of widows and desperate men. Tommy's not going to let this rest. Times are like these. Communists in the family is bad for business. You have to leave the city. You think I can't handle Tommy Shaw? Oh, God. You can't. I'm having trouble these days, and I'm twice the man you are. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, girl. Get him. I booked you both tickets for the next boat from Liverpool to New York. America, Freddy. They've already had their revolution. You won't have to bother. Everybody's pleading with you, you motherfucker. Put your pride away and get out of here to save your baby. Would you ladies at least let a man sleep on it? No. Which means no. He's really stubborn. Honestly. It's like, go take your new wife and your new soon-to-be-born baby and get the go hell live somewhere out of else. Here. Unless you don't actually care about your wife and baby. He keeps talking about, like, I'm not scared of Thomas Shelby. Like, I can handle Thomas Shelby. 
he keeps saying all that. Well, you got Thomas Shelby's wife, so, or sister, so wife. Girl. And obviously they have the <laughs> history from the war, so. Yeah. You had no business. Observe and report. That is your remit. You went after him because he was IRA. I followed him because I thought he might have information. You take too much upon yourself. I'm doing my job. The death of a base Fenian doesn't concern me. Your welfare does. Killing a man affects the heart. It does. Hers especially. I know that because of our family connections, you take my progress personally, but I don't need you to be my father. I would be thinking of you. It's nice. I mean, he obviously has a responsibility to make sure that she's not getting put in the, like, the most crazy of harm's way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though I feel like... Putting her in a pub is yeah, probably like... Run by the Shelbys. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That definitely feels like a dangerous position. You're collecting a suit for Cheltenham is very nice. How the bloody hell do you know? I know a lot of things, Mr. Kimber. And as I told you before, I know the Lee brothers. And I know they're going to be at the Cheltenham races as well. They're planning and showing up in numbers and robbing your bookies. You think I can't handle the Lees? Just a word of warning from a friend. I'll see you at Cheltenham. I'll wave at you from my box. <laughs> If you are coming to the races, bring that pretty barmaid of yours. Already invited. God, I don't want to be around Kimber. <laughs> to even gather like this today is illegal. Chief Inspector Campbell has ordered that we're not allowed to assemble in groups of more than three people. To comply with the law, please now clump together in groups of three. <laughs> You hear that, boys? The same whistles they used to blow to send us over the top, they now blow to try and break us off. So before the specials get here, raise a hand to all those who want to strike. So he has a greater cause that he, I know, but. Yeah, it just feels very dangerous that he's continuously doing this. And... Yeah, and leading an entire group of people. People keep asking me questions, though I don't know the answer to it's called to be an adult. Is it true your lady got married? So I don't know. Where's she living there? I don't know. Yeah, he's not kept in the loop on any of the family stuff. Yeah, I'd be pissed too. Who killed the paddy from the black swan? I oh, go, what paddy? They say, is it you, Peaky Blinders? Who stole the guns from the BSI? Shit, you don't know shit about shit right now. What guns, Tommy? Yeah. About that. I thought after your meeting, I thought you needed a break. <gasps> what bloody guns, Tommy? You've had a hard time these past few years. God knows you have. You deserve some rest. We had some luck. Some bloody luck. It fell off a wagon into our laps. And all you need to know is, it's us that has the machine guns now. And it's them that's in the mud. Oh, wow. Yeah. I have a surprise for you. Come on. Hey, this is brutal. Honestly. Like, dealing with everything he's dealing with, on top of the idea that it feels like he's being left out of all the family stuff, like... You don't know shit about shit that's yeah. going on right now. Not even your sister. Surprise. Where is she? Oh, the hate... Oh, Those it's for him. When we were in France, Sweet. he used to say, when I go back to England... I want to own my own pub. Well, now you've gone soft. How do we know it's for oh, sale? Oh, I thought, oh, never, wait, never, never. Everything's for sale to us, Arthur. We're making a lot of money these days. We need a legitimate business. Pass the money from the shop. Well, we know what to do. You spend two thirds of your life in pubs, just pour it. <laughs> but we can still drink it, all right? Your pub, you do what you want. Why are we always watching shows where these groups of people need to get into legitimate businesses to cover up their illegal businesses? Honestly, every single show. <laughs> Mr. Campbell wants an explanation. Today, some rebel-rousing union man brought the BSA out on strike. Freddie Thorne. Thought you promised he wouldn't come back. I heard that Freddie married your sister. Oh, my God. Some cool family you've got, eh? Bet you can't wait for Christmas. <laughs> Shit. Little bit of Freddy Thorne to us. We'll take your sister in us and her complex. Oh, OK. Or you can turn him in and your sister goes free. 
And this is why Freddy had to leave town. He's just gonna cause trouble. I'll say good night then, so. Well, it would have been a good night had you not popped my damn tires, you dick. What a shot. Right. There's so many shots of Tommy like contemplating yes. and thinking. Yes. Oh. Have you seen Freddie Thorne? No. Oh, or Tommy. Uh-oh. Uh Uh-oh. I have to find Freddy. Drink this first. No, I have to find them. I think they're going to kill each other. Wait. We need to talk. I thought he was actually going to do it. I was like, oh, shit. What exactly is it that you want, Freddy? I came to tell you. That's not going to work, Tommy. Polly came round. She gave me that. Polly must have had a rush of blood. Or port wine. Your honesty is appreciated now if you're not going to use that thing. I'm not finished! God. This feels like a misunderstanding about of the some guns. kind. Do you remember we used to jump in here and see a good swim across the I'm west? here to talk business. Do you reckon we could still do it? Oh, oh, that's all he needed. That's all he needed. Oh, shit. I feel like Tommy will hesitate a lot less than Freddy. You loaded so Ada with your bastard because she's a Shelby. You thought it'd mean you'd be somebody. Ooh, burn. Won't let you fuck up my sister's life, your cause. My God. See, I feel, see, she was, he was using her. You actually believe that? Oh, okay. Maybe not. Please tell me you're not using his sister. I love her, Tommy. Okay, well, that's good. I've loved her since she was nine and I was 12. She loves me the same. That's a shot right there, too. Yeah. Do you even know the word? This marriage will not stand. Dude, that's ballsy of Freddy to just walk up on him, put a gun to his head, and then he actually gets to walk away. Regardless of who he is or what the relationship is. Freddy can want your money. Now the coppers are saying that if we don't turn Freddy in, they'll put Ada on the arrest warrant as well. That's where your compassion gets you, Paul. From now on, we do it my way. Uh-oh. Oh, what? Yikes, dude. Dude, this shit is intense. Another flashback. This is incredibly sad. Oh god, ah, oh, that makes me uncomfy. Claustrophobic. Be careful, Danny. Holy shit. Oh, did they stop? Oh my goodness. People from digging in. <gasps> oh my God. Wow, dude. Those flashbacks keep getting like way more intense every time we see yeah. one. Yeah. Damn, dude. Private Whizbang reporting, sir. Whizbang. He just happens to show up. He's in one of those dreams. I got talking to some old black about Birmingham. He said there's been trouble. An IRA man shot. Oh, is this gonna cause a bunch of problems? Their high command think it's the Peaky Blinders who shot him. Oh, shit. I came up on the next boat to warn you. Is it true? No, but lies travel faster than the truth. Ain't that the truth? Tell him to send someone to parlay. Tell him there's been a misunderstanding and we don't want any trouble. Yikes. You've got enough trouble, right, Tommy? The whiskey and the smoke. I can smell it in the air. Oh, I was wondering that. I was wondering if you could tell when you walk in that room. That guy was the worst job to make. Why he fucking volunteered? <laughs> so Freddy got shot over that. Is that how he saved Tommy? Taking that bullet? 
Sometimes it lasts all night, and I lie here, and I listen to the shovels. Against that wall there. Dude. And I pray the sun will come up with the curtains before they break through. No, I don't pray. I hope. Sometimes it happens, the sun beats them. But mostly, the shovels beat the sun. These poor men and what they dealt with in the war and <sighs> coming home and not having a proper way of handling it and dealing yeah, with it. Cause how, how do you, how back then? How? Oh. This song's heavy, listen to your breath. I was never the type to wake up and take a shot. <clears throat> I could no. never pull that off. Same, same. I was like, I don't want any more of the hair of the dog that bit me. Because <laughs> typically, if I got that drunk off of whatever item, I never want to have that drink of whatever that is again. Dude, the war aspect and the mental recovery of the war aspect is such a powerful story in this show so far. Mm -hmm. She was worried you and Freddy. It had made her sick. She's all right, but in her condition, she needs peace. Women talk. That is something they do. She talked about you. Said you keep everything locked up. That's what men do. Your sister's nice. I like her. Can't be easy for her. Her brother and her husband fighting over the same thing. Is he gonna get mad at her right now for like saying too much? What is it you and Freddie are fighting over? Getting too personal here or what? I know. I'm a, I'm a little worried about her. I'll meet you here. It's nine o'clock tomorrow morning. And he just ignores it. Did you buy a dress? Yes, I bought a dress. How does it look? The way this show is filmed is- I love it. It's so well done. A lot of like really tight personal shots. You look lovely. Is it just the two of us going to the races? Something like that. <laughs> I'm not even gonna say you look nice or anything. You, you know, you gotta keep it tight. This guy, the little brother, just cracks me up. Johnny, what's our mission, boy? To stick it to the Lee family, Arthur! That's right. Oh my God. We're gonna stop them. What about Kimber's men? Thought he had his own protection. Kimber's let his troops go rotten. They're on the take from the Lees to look the other way. Are these little kids are taken in there. Different time. Those of you with guns, keep them They're just like babies. He's like seven. <laughs> oh. So when do we share out the cash? Jesus Christ! What did he just give? Him. Is that a mace? <laughs> the kid picked up a little knife. He's like, nah, you're gonna take this giant hatchet. <laughs> With a hook on it. That's the wildest part about this time period is watching like the little kids get involved in shit. Yeah, cause they did. Seeing them smoke and drink and fight and Carry all this other shit like. <laughs> well, I prefer to come to the races the back way. Peace me out of trouble. What did we get today, Beth? Nah, gambling for months. If you're lucky you're with me, you'd be wasting your money on fixed races. How do you fix a race? How should I know? <laughs> Tell security you are Lady Sarah's or Lady Sarah Duggan of Connemara. You got lost when you went to the look for the boy riding a horse. You say that I'm Prussian. Don't speak a word of English. Come on, posh girl. Earn your three quid. Do you dance? If I'm asked properly. Lady Sarah, Connemara, will you dance with me? This relationship's getting interesting. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I love that dress, though, she's wearing. It's very cute. Sorry, pretty. Pretty, it's not cute. See, okay, he has a red handkerchief. I can't get that out of my head. They, like, I mean, he like, said that for like, a reason. He's trying to, like, pawn her off on... I just... He asked for her, didn't he? He told him to yeah, invite. Yeah, yeah, I just, I don't know. I'm worried about her. 
Roberts, the Peaky Blinders are here. I told you, Mr. Kimber. He's got some balls, that one. And she's got some body, that one. Who's the lovely lady sitting next to you, Rude? <laughs> oh, God. It's a pleasure doing business with you. What the hell? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. As business. Oh, on the sink. Oh, oh god damn. Oh, ah. Oh, ah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, mother. Oh, oh. 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 I commandeer this stolen money by order of the Peaky Blinders. I love that. Fuck. Oh, god damn. That sounds so powerful when they say by order of the Peaky Blinders. I love it. Either your left leg is stronger than your right or we're making a getaway. Hey. I hope this doesn't involve razor blades. <laughs> we chase the ladies across the track right the way down to Devon Road. We got every penny back. Anyone hurt? Ah, a few cuts and bruises. Is the girl lady Sarah? <clears throat> Holy shit! This is wild! Your money, rescued from the Lee brothers. Damn. Your own protection is failing. From now on, you contract out your racetrack security with the Peaky Blinders. In return, you give us He's five percent of the take and three Legal betting pitches at every race meeting north of the River Seven, rising to six after one year if we are all satisfied with the service. <laughs> Holy wow. shit. Wow. I'm impressed. But also, that guy, guy is ear off. I say you talk business to my accountant. I want to dance. By the way, I sound that song that's playing right now, it sounds like a song from like The Karate Kid. Oh, yeah. Your man said it was all right for me to have this dance. You didn't ask her properly, though. Nope. Dude, get off me, bro. <laughs> ew. 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 Cringe. You're the worst. Two guards for every bookie. At every meter. We have contacts with good people among the gypsies. We'll always know when the Lees plan to attack. With all the strikes and troubles, can't really depend on the police. Anyway, we're more honest. Looks like you two are making a deal. We are making progress. And let me throw a small condition into the mix. Uh-oh. she going to be part of that? We're going to go for dinner at Kimber's house. I have some business to settle first with this accountant, so you go on ahead with Kimber. Till I'm done here. Is that all right? No. Look, I'll throw in an extra three quid for your extra time. Dang. Treating her like a whore. I think I'm a whore. Oh, thank, thank you. I didn't even fucking say I mean, it. A whore, Bryce. This is fucked up. Your hole's not being penetrated, though, dude. The deal is, I'll give him two hours with you. He thinks he's a ladies' man. Whenever you want, just kick him in the balls. Okay. If you want to be part of my organization, Ugh. you have to make sacrifices. Ay, ay, ay. Do we have a deal? Yeah, we have a deal. Two hours? Yeah. Side bet, ten pounds as I have a fucked in one. <laughs> Fucking horrible. <laughs> hate Kimber, but also fucking Shelby, dude. What the hell, man? I bet you said you could have me, didn't you? Well, he has a... Girl, you'd be out of here. Into. Yours might be a prostitute, but I'm not. I feel bad for her. So is she a prostitute? God's honest truth. I don't know what she is. This, <sighs> this is not good. Oh, well, good. She has a gun on her, so that's good. You showed me up back there at the races. But this feels like a... a... She can't kill him. No, she can't. <laughs> I feel like even kicking him in the balls and leaving is gonna Had. cause problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, you weren't so stiff back there, were you? Hmm? Yo. You ever been in a house this big? Oh, fuck off. 
He's one of them. Do you know who I am? Oh, God. He's not slick or smooth or anything. He's just like... An asshole. Oh, look, I've dropped something. Pick it up. Oh, God. You're a fucking barmaid. If I drop a glass on the floor, you pick it up. Oh, yeah, and now I want to have sex with you? Fuck off. She's going to kill him. Right, you little <laughs> slack. I tried something, right? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I've got another hour. Just wait. I was gonna let you go through with this, but in the end, my conscience got the better of me. She looks good on the outside, but she has the clap. Oh dear. When you took a shine to what I thought I'd use her, someone told me she had a sif. I thought, what the hell? Call it my better nature. She's uh, she's a whore. Holy shit. Can we shake hands and forget this ever happens? Holy shit. What the fuck? I mean, he did that to save her. I get that. But also, what the fuck? To make himself look like a good dude? I I just don't... I don't know how I feel. Start of the day, I was Lady Sarah of Connemara. By the end, I was a whore with a clap. <laughs> dude. You're a fucking bastard offering me like that. But then you change your mind. Why did you change your mind, Thomas? Yeah. Was this a part of the plan or he actually felt bad? Because, I, like, does this mean their whole deal is off? I feel like the deal is still on because of what he explained to him. Like, well, he, I mean, he was able to definitely provide better security and getting all of his money back. I noticed an interesting trend, though, between the two of them. Mm. She always asks him questions and he never answers them. Well, he said women talk, men don't. Yeah. He just, he, he, like, every, there were like three of them, I think, this episode where she was directly asking things and either just deflected to something else or just didn't say a word. I couldn't but, handle that. I'm like, fucking talk to me, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> I think all of that was part of the plan, but I think he actually, I think the conversation with the other woman, yeah. I think might have triggered something in him to be like, that's kind of fucked up. I'm not going to let this go through. Yeah. And went and saved her. Yeah, I'm hoping that that was, I don't know. I, I, definitely, I don't like any, you get it. You get it, but also. <laughs> I, I, we've seen with Thomas so far, he is very detail oriented with his plan so yeah, far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was all part of it. I think he was legitimately going to give her to Kimber for two hours but I think he actually felt something and was like, nah, that ain't right. I'm not going to let that happen and went and took care of it. But I think the deal was already made. I think Peaky Blinders are going to be the security for the okay, races. I hope I, so. That's what I feel like happened. Yeah. So we'll see. Oh, God. But she was going to shoot him. She was, 100%. She was going to kill that fucking guy. Yeah. Also, shoot him in the dick. Yeah. I mean. Right in it. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely Make where that was going. Make it the most painful. That's definitely where it was going. So I thought it was quite interesting how it almost felt like Tommy was the distraction while the other crew members well, yeah. came in and yes, handled totally business. Especially in red. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the way the Peaky Blinders came through into that bathroom and jacked that guy for his money and beat the shit out of him and Just, then sliced ah! part of his ear off. Hitting him, hitting his head on the sink. The sink didn't and, even break. Well, like, things were built different back then, so that sink isn't going to get destroyed with a headbutt. No! Today, maybe it only lasts like one headshot, but back then, things were made strong. I so like two tops. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could probably... I thought they were going to kill the guy, but I feel like that would probably be a little messier than it needed to be. You're, like, you're not killing. You're just robbing and sending a message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... Little brother, he's he, wild. He's literally like a pit bull, like we talked about in the intro. He's like the like the muscle, the the fighter of the group, where he yeah. goes in and handles. It's like, damn, dude, this kid is like aggressive, and he's all about it. He's like, sick him, boy, and he just goes. Yeah, like, yep, one hundred percent. And the fact that we saw a freaking like six year old <laughs> grabbing that giant ass. I mean, he had to thing. be like eight maximum. Still under honestly. ten. Honestly. Definitely under 10. Getting into some shit. And we heard the line again. It's so far through these three episodes. It's my favorite thing. Yeah. By Order of the Peaky Blinders. 
that just feels so just ironclad. I need to know, like, like, what do those words mean? What is a peaky? What is a blind? Or like, what exactly does what does that stuff stand I, I for? Need to, yeah, I need to like, are those names blinder? It feels feel like, like a contradiction a to me because yeah. it's like peekaboo, like you could see, and then blinders, like you can't see. Like, I don't know. That, that's where my brain oh, went with it. Oh, well, that makes sense. Actually, it kind of was one of those things where I feel like it's two words that contradict each other, but I have no. That's, I just think. Like they hide around. in the shadows, like they're peak. Okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We could probably come up with a bunch of different things that it possibly means, but it I'm probably sure. has a very direct meaning. I'm sure we might go over it. Yeah, at some well, point. I'm sure we might. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Yes. I, I'm i loving this show through these first three episodes. I think the way the story is being built, I absolutely love the way that it's shot. Yeah. There are so many up close and personal. It makes everything feel really intimate and just it powerful it, at the same time. Yes, it makes it really interesting to watch and like visually beautiful. Yeah. I mean, the environment helps that a lot. Except for when they get right up in that ear slicing. That was awesome. Ah. That was pretty wild how they went about and did that. So, oh, good God. Yeah, that whole situation with Kimber, we'll see where it goes. We'll see if he's cool with the way the situation went out, if that deal I mean, actually he went through. saved you from syphilis. Right, but they didn't actually shake hands again. Yeah. Another non-handshake agreement, which... That feels like it's becoming a trend. That's two yeah. episodes in a row now. Yeah. But this whole situation with Freddy feels like it's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. That feels like a not good situation at all. And because yeah, there's so much history. Yeah, and especially there's... the fact that he came up onto Tommy with the gun and was like... Yeah, there's so much trauma. But if you were going to kill him, you would have done it. Right, 100%. I You're mean, it's only episode anything. three. I get the vibe that Tommy Shelby's going to last a little longer than three episodes. Yeah. Just my guess, but... Yeah. We don't know what this show, we don't know what kind of ruthlessness they have with killing off characters yet. We don't, we haven't gotten there yet. So we'll see. But yeah, I, I get the vibe that Tommy's going to be around a minute. In three episodes, he wasn't yeah. going to, especially Freddy. But the way they continue to harp on their PTSD with the war yeah. and his dream sequence and the fact that his wall is like symbolism for the wall that we saw in that last well, flashback. Well, even Danny was like, feels the same way. Yeah, and I mean, we've seen him go through it already. Oh, yeah. Danny has had some situations where, very unfortunate. But watching Tommy and, like, I feel like every episode we've gotten a dream because he smoked the stuff and he's gone to sleep and then he's had these dreams. And each one has progressively gotten more intense. Mm -hmm. And watching them come through the wall. And Freddie, I think, was the one who got shot, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. And is that... I asked him during the episode, is that what he did to, like, protect and save Tommy? Like, uh, or is there more to it? Right. Is there more to the what they went through? I'm sure there is because it sounded like Tommy went through a whole lot and did a whole lot. He was quite decorated when he got home. So, yeah. I mean, through these first three episodes, the show is really cool. The tone is amazing. Through these three episodes, what are you feeling? Oh, I love it. Oh, this is fantastic. I'm on board. Yeah. Let's go. So cool. All right. Um, <laughs> that was quite funny. That's Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where very, to get this stuff. Very random. But yeah, you guys share all your thoughts. Leave your comments. Catch you later for the next one. By order of Peaky Blinders, come back. We'll see you later. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.